Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone, uh, here in the audience, of course, and also to the viewers on our live webcast. We are live from the World Economic Forum on ASEAN in Hanoi, Vietnam. And this is our second press conference of the day, and we have uh, the honor to have two special guests who have flown in to the region, uh, and one, I believe, from very far away. It may well be uh, the guest that flew in from the farthest, uh, Minister Ampuero, uh, the Foreign Minister of Chile. And else we also have Ellen Bollard, uh, the Director General of the Asia-Pacific Asia Economic uh, Community. And what we'll be talking about with these two guests is indeed the agenda for the Asia-Pacific Asia region going into 2019, when Chile will take on the presidency of uh, the community. It takes the presidency at an important time uh, when there are a lot of tribulations, as it's called, uh, and, and quite some worries about the future of trade and also economic growth, not just in the region, but more importantly, globally. So here to talk about that are our two special guests. We'll start with introductions and introductory statements from both of them, and then we'll turn to some questions from the audience before closing in about 25 minutes. Why don't we start with you, Minister Ampuero, um, to talk about the agenda for APEC in 2019. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. I would like to start my words uh, quoting uh, an Argentinian wonderful writer, Jorge Luis Borges, uh, who said, uh, every generation uh, faces very hard and difficult times. And I think this is uh, exactly what we are feeling today. Uh, the, the big difference is that e every generation thinks they have faced the worst time of history uh, a long time. And the other um, quote I would like to mention is uh, it's related. I, I'm going to quote it very freely from uh, Henry Kissinger, who said, countries are more or less defined by their dreams and fears. And that is exactly what is going on today. Uh, some countries are trying to pursue a certain direction, uh, stressing the, 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 the dreams they have in, 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 in their projects and agendas. And others are suffering a lot because they are just uh, being inspired by, by, by their fears. In terms of Chile, I would say we are very aware that these are difficult times, especially because there are some voices talking about protectionism. And uh, on the other hand, there are um, the dreams uh, of some countries, like Chile. We still, and very clearly, support and, are, and based our, uh, base our development on an open market and, and on free trade. But this is not only a um, philosophical or theoretical definition. It is based on our own development. What we have achieved during the last 35, 40 years as a country is based on uh, being able to work in the frame of free trade. Chile has only 18 million in the inhabitants. This is a small market. And our alternative for being a developed country, for achieving our goals, was and is still this uh, aim of going into the world and uh, getting more free trade agreements and better conditions for our, our products. That would be uh, my initial statement. Excellent. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, Chile is uh, part of the Asia-Pacific economic uh, uh, community. It spans, uh, I think, more than half of the globe, uh, I suppose, if you look at it uh, on, on, on the globe. Um, and of course, the other Part of it is the region that we are uh, in right now, Mr. Bollard. Um, zooming out a little bit, could you tell us a little bit more about um, what, uh, what, it, what the future might bring for Asia Pacific, not just on this side of, uh, or on that side of the, the globe, but uh, partic more particularly in this region? Sure, well, APEC is actually more than half the world's economy. So it's big, it's important. It's the biggest organization of that sort in the world. It came 30 years ago when some very insightful ministers thought if we could tie this region together economically, not politically, but economically, 
then there's going to be big benefits for potentially everybody right around the region. And that's been true. That's worked. That's been the model. But, of course, now we are more concerned with some of the um, barriers to trade that look like they're going up, some of the barriers to economic integration around the region. And this region, of course, um, is a real focal centre for that. So even if some of that, not all of it, but some of it started out of new US administration policies, we definitely see the impact around the region and we'll see more of an impact. And uh, we're very pleased to hear Chile say that next year it will be standing up for continued free trade and reduction of economic barriers for the obvious principles that that helps people improve their life. That's the only reason we're doing all of this. This year, um, Papua New Guinea is actually hosting APEC and in a month and a half's time we will meet in Port Moresby. We'll have the leaders from around the 21 economies all there. Uh, last year, it was here, it was Vietnam, it was actually in Da Nang and we had a very big meeting with President Xi Jinping, President Trump, President Putin and others and uh, they signed up to an amended statement whereby we could understand how we would keep moving forward in an open, uh, integrating sort of way. But in one sense, the world's actually got a little bit more complex since then. That's right. And so, of course, uh, this year we have seen uh, the signing of the amended uh, TPP. Um, and that, I suppose, brings about more integration of at least a part of the APEC uh, region. Uh, what can we expect, uh, according to you, uh, going forward in 2019? Are we seeing a continuation of, let's say, the TPP side of things? Or uh, do you fear more, uh, let's say, the other uh, more protectionist side of, uh, of uh, the, the, the th those in those perspectives? Well, Chile is a big driver of TPP, so I'll leave it to the minister to talk about where that's going. Uh, but I, we would expect um, to be talking about potential new entrants. That's not going to stop. In addition, of course, is the Pacific Alliance. And then we're based in Singapore, and we're watching Singapore this year chairing ASEAN, and a hope that they can uh, move the very big possibilities of regional comprehensive economic partnership, which is, which is possibly not that exciting in terms of what it actually offers um, in, in terms of trade possibilities, but it's huge. It's got to be the biggest footprint of that sort in the world. And if really we can get an agreement with China and India, plus, 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 then that's half the world. And so that's going to keep moving. So I don't expect, uh, I expect to see these big regional trade, trade agreements continuing to move forward. And in one sense, there's actually more determination to do that now. Uh, it was already mentioned uh, just briefly now, of course, the signing of TPP in its adjusted form uh, has happened now. Uh, and of course, we'll see the effects of that, I suppose, starting 2019 when you take on the presidency of uh, APAC. What's your, what's your agenda? What would you like to achieve uh, going forward? During this APIC uh, 2019, uh, that will take place in, in Chile, in different regions of Chile, um, I would like to stress uh, the theme, the main theme we will have, and this is uh, connecting people, building the future. This is the huge theme we have defined um, as APEC 2019. But there are mainly three uh, very important priorities. And the first one we have developed is to improve the uh, digital economy, the services and digital economy. This is very important for us uh, to be put in the first uh, place, and that means to be able to innovate, to be able to introduce uh, new technological processes, to be able as well to uh, communicate and educate people, to bring them at the level that they are able to work with these new te technologies. And the second uh, priority is related to connectivity. Uh, only connectivity will allow a very inclusive trade this is also one of our aims. Um, and in, this, uh, in, this, in, in regard to this, I would say that the third one, uh, the third uh, priority, is uh, related to the participation of women in the labor process. Um, uh, this is a, a, a central point because this will allow as well to democratize the labor world. Uh, it will also allow to attract more talents. It has uh, uh, 
This is very close related to fairness in a labor world and also to um, reinforce the, uh, the, the, the economic growth in our, all of our countries. So those are the three main priorities. Uh, but the final question is the following, or the final aim is the following. Uh, if we are working uh, around APEC 2019 and we are trying to develop our efforts towards a certain aim, the most important aim has to be and is the real people. It has to benefit the real people and also regions of our countries, not only central parts of very important regions of our countries, but the, this has to be an inclusive uh, result. The outcome has to be also um, positive for the majority of our population. Otherwise, otherwise, the view of people about globalization, about international free trade, will be not at the highest level. And we have to be very aware of that, especially in a time where several voices are talking about uh, uh, protectionists. Of course, the elephant in the room, but here we are, of course, in a country that supports uh, free trade and globalization uh, to a large degree, also because it has benefited a lot. I want to turn to the audience and, and see if there's any questions um, for our guests uh, about this topic, uh, the Asia-Pacific Economic uh, Community. So I'll have a look. Uh, if you have a question, you can raise uh, your hand, and I think we have a microphone over there. So go ahead um, and identify yourself, and then we'll uh, answer your question. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm Tuan Dao. I'm, I am from Hanoi Times, um, Vietnam. Uh, actually, my question for you is for the two speakers is that uh, how do you see the impact of the ongoing trade war between the U.S. and China on China and on Vietnam? Uh, and uh, the second question goes to the uh, Foreign Minister of Chile. Is that what is the, what is the process of uh, ratifying the CPTPP in the country? And, uh, and do you really hope that this pact will come into force next year? Thank you very much. Thank you so much for those uh, questions. So the first is on the impact of the trade uh, tensions between the U.S. and China on uh, Vietnam. We'll, we'll focus on, on that first. And the second, of course, for the minister on CPTP, CPTPP uh, in, uh, in Chile. Uh, why don't you go ahead, uh, Mr. Bollard, first. Yes, well... We can't be definitive about the impact of trade protection and trade restrictions because some of it is threats and may not be carried through. But certainly there's enough actually in place now for us to be concerned about it. Um, it wasn't, I think, initially so much a bilateral thing. It was the United States having some concerns about its trade deficit with a whole range of economies. But certainly in this region, we uh, do see quite a strong bilateral tension, trade tension now with US and China impact on China. I think you have to bear in mind where China is with regard to all its investment after the global financial crisis. It's very big stimulus. It's very big investment in infrastructure and concerns that China has got as well about slowing growth and about automation and stuff that we hear a lot about in the United States, but actually that's a concern in China and they're worried about losing competitiveness. And, uh, and uh, that certainly impacts how they think about these things. But uh, they have responded to some of the US um, increase in tariff protection. They could respond in different ways. Uh, from the region's point of view, we hope that doesn't happen, but we've yet to see how that all plays out. We've yet to see whether there's any bilateral deals going to be done between China and the United States. But generally speaking, I don't think it's good news for United States or China in all of this. Uh, certainly when we look in Vietnam and more broadly in ASEAN, we see uh, a lot of attention on the regional supply chains and just what production and what part of the production process is being done in some of the ASEAN suppliers and in China final assembly for export into the United States because of a lot of Chinese exports to the US are principally not made in China, they're principally made in other economies, particularly ASEAN. And China is very aware that in some areas, Vietnam is now much more competitive than China, uh, lower labor costs and lower other costs also. So I think there's a lot of focus on thinking about would any 
investment move out of China to places like Vietnam. I don't see it necessarily happening right yet, but it's certainly on the minds of investors and purchasing managers and supply chain logistics operators are the areas where you might see the hub that's happening in China now actually moving to an ASEAN lower cost, more competitive economy and then going into the United States that way. But having said all that, the IMF numbers suggest that uh, trade frictions are going to slow down growth around the world and that also means slowing down growth in China and that also means slowing down growth in this whole region. So there's no big positives out of this, I think. It's going to be complex. Uh, we may see investment moving uh, in complicated ways, but it's not something that we should really be looking forward to. Thank you, Mr. Bollard. And then, of course, a follow-up question was uh, for the minister. Uh, and, and I suppose the question is, is, is also, can then uh, the CPTPP uh, provide additional economic boost if indeed uh, uh, the US-China tra trade tensions are putting a strain on them. Uh, but for that to happen, of course, it has to be ratified first. Uh, what is uh, the process there? Uh, I will say I am uh, one of the optimists. And we have already four countries that have uh, ratified uh, the TPP, 11. Uh, four or out of six, uh, out of six we need. And um, Chile will, uh, this year, send uh, this project to the parliament to be ratified. And uh, we are optimists. And I think soon we will have the six uh, ratifications uh, that we need. Uh, so this uh, uh, agreement can start to work in the uh, proper way. Uh, once said that, I would like to stress TPP 11 of course, it's, it's very important, it's crucial. Uh, but in the case of Chile, we also are working with other mechanisms because we are work, working on a, um, I would say, a world level, um, trying to play with different mechanisms to uh, not to be affected so much by protectionist uh, measures. And um, among them, or before I mention them, I would like to, to tell you, uh, the journalist who asked about this, Ch uh, um, the first trade partner of Chile is China. And the second one is the United States. So we are in a very interesting position. We have very close relations to the both most important uh, economies that have uh, facing, are facing now tensions in commercial terms. And um, we have to develop as well a very strategic view about this relation. Uh, currently, we can uh, work and uh, trade with both countries in a very uh, positive way. Um, but we have to watch at the same time these tensions with, um, uh, we're watching it with some concern uh, because nobody knows exactly if we are going to a a good uh, a solution to an, a good uh, end of this or, or if this process will uh, worsen. Um, Chile uh, makes uh, some other efforts in the frame of APEC, as I, I just uh, mentioned. Uh, in the frame also of ASEAN, we're trying to uh, get more uh, uh, deep and closer relations to uh, the economies of ASEAN also working inside the Pacific Alliance with our partners in Mexico, Colombia, Peru, and as well with the Mercosur. This is in the other alliance, economic alliance in Latin America, formed by Argentina, Brazil, Uruguay, and Paraguay. Um, and we are trying to, to serve as a, as a bridge between both alliances in, in the region. And at the same time, we plan to become uh, a gateway for the Asian economies to go into uh, Latin America uh, yeah, for trade or for investments. So I think every country has to develop a, a certain, um, uh, several cards, uh, a, a kind of menu of alternatives to face this uh, current situation. Very well. Um, let's see if there's uh, uh, one more question in the room, uh, because I think we have time for one more. Uh, let's have a look. 
any further questions? Uh, yeah, we've already talked about it, of course, Minister Ampuero, but uh, you know, you're here now in, in Vietnam, and I was wondering uh, whether you have any specific agenda here uh, and concerning uh, the bilateral relationship between uh, Chile and, uh, and Vietnam on uh, economic and trade. Yes, well, we have been working very well and very close with uh, Vietnam. Chile and Vietnam have an, uh, an old uh, relation. Uh, this uh, Chile is, uh, I would say it was the second country in Latin America who uh, started relations with Vietnam. And we have um, uh, an agreement uh, that is working very well. We want to deepen it. I will uh, meet today the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam. Uh, and during these days, we will have also the visit of the delegation of the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce, Chile, Vietnam. So there are um, several projects. Uh, this is a growing relation. And uh, we are very happy in terms that we are working on another fields together supporting each other. So I, I'm very positive in terms of the relation between uh, Vietnam and, and Chile. Recently in Chile we received a very important delegation from Vietnam, around uh, 40 delegates from e economy, uh, business people, and from the government, and we signed uh, several agreements. So we are very positive in, in this uh, uh, regard. And then uh, to finalize, perhaps, Mr. Ballard, of course, we are also here in the World Economic Forum on ASEAN, uh, another uh, regional bloc uh, that works a lot on trade and economic integration and is completing, uh, hopefully, its uh, uh, economic community uh, going forward. What are your uh, views on, on that? Well, ASEAN is 650 million people. It's massive. It's very strongly go ahead. Uh, it's done a lot in terms of ASEAN economic community. It's at the core of the regional comprehensive economic partnership discussions. And it's full of people who want continue to have better lifestyles and be better off than their parents. And they generally see trade and open growth as the way to do that. We're all looking at the moment to try and ensure that there isn't a uh, upsurge in third economies of trade protection. We're not generally seeing that at the moment. And we're also, uh, we do want to ensure that we don't see some of these growth economic risks transferring into financial risks in the region. Similarly, we're not seeing that at the moment either, but we need to stay alert. Yeah, very well. Uh, so uh, I suppose in, in conclusion, uh, we do have some optimism uh, uh, on the, the forecast or the, the uh, uh, future of uh, ASEAN and, and Vietnam, and also the uh, Asia-Pacific uh, uh, relations. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bollard, uh, Minister Ampuero, and thank you all for being here. Thank you.